Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, welcome to my channel if you are new here. I am Martina Lilly and today we're going to do a speed reviews of all of the new complexion products that I have tried over the last three, four-ish months. I'm going to give you my thoughts now that I have really tested them and know like whether or not I recommend them or who I recommend them for, so on and so forth. So hopefully that sounds interesting to you guys. If it does and you enjoy my videos, pretty pretty please give that video or this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you do enjoy my videos. It really, really helps my channel out and I just appreciate it so, so much. And now let's get into the video. If you are new to my channel, I have been doing this year about every three months, a speed reviews of all the new products that I had tried for the previous three months, just to give you guys, you know, I've, uh, my final thoughts on the products after really testing them a lot. Uh, some of these I have dedicated reviews on, some of them I just have in like get ready with me's and stuff. So I will have a playlist linked down below in my description box of all of the videos that I currently have on my channel where I'm using these products just so if you want to see any of them like really in action you can check out that playlist uh, normally I would do like all of the products but honestly I've I'm really late to the party on this video I've just been super busy and sidetracked and there's been a lot of new like eyeshadow palettes coming out so I'm just getting to this now and so I'm gonna do this in half like complexion and then I'll do um, like bronzer, highlights, etc. And then I'll do like lip products and stuff. Everything will be linked in the description box for you guys. They are affiliate links. So if you shop through them, I do make a small commission. So thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate it. And I will try my hardest to put timestamps on this video in case you are only interested in certain parts or certain products. So this one is foundations, concealers, and powders. I haven't tried any new primers lately. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six new foundations and six concealers and one color corrector or concealer slash color corrector and four powders. Yeah, I know. I've really been, there's really been some awesome makeup coming out. Um, I will also tell you, actually, I don't think any of the products I received in the, I've gotten the video today yet. None of these products were received in PR. I purchased all of these products with my hard earned money and let's get into it. So let's start with foundation. This one first, this is the Shiseido Revitalescence Skin Glow Foundation. I have the shade 160 and the shade match is pretty good. Sometimes my foundations are a touch too light, but I don't mind that because by the time I've put cream bronzer and bronzer and stuff on, it all just comes together. And I really do swing from like incredibly pale. And then if by chance I've gone out in the sun, I can like go a shade or two darker quite quickly. So, you know, anyway, you don't, you don't care. If you use me as a shade reference, I find this really good. First things first, the packaging. I hate the packaging. It reminds me of like a roll on deodorant. I, it's just, listen, you know, packaging isn't everything to everyone, but for me, I am a luxury makeup lover. And part of that experience for me is packaging. And this just doesn't cut it for me, but it's, you know, that's just a side note. Um, now the product itself is lovely, really, really lovely, but it's not going to be suited to everyone. So I'm going to kind of break that down for you. Now this product is a lightweight foundation. You can build it up to be a medium, but I would just go with a light coverage for this one because it will, if you build it up too much, it can get a little bit cakey. This is going to be best suited to people with dry skin, dry to normal skin, because it is very hydrating and very, very glowy. So if you have oily skin, I really don't think this is going to be suited to you. Now I have combination skin for reference and I can make this work, but I'll tell you how I make this work for me. And I say make this work in the sense that it's like hard work. It's not, I'm just going to tell you how this works for me in like with combination skin. But if you have dry skin, I really do feel like, and, and want that lighter coverage. I really do feel like you will absolutely love this. For me, how I like to wear it is a light coverage, as I said, because if I build it up too much, it does get a little bit cakey. I'm just at that age now with my skin where it doesn't like a lot of foundation. It can't take a lot of foundation. I'm better off doing a light coverage, maybe a light medium coverage, and then using like a uh, powder foundation or something to lightly, you know, set to add the extra coverage if I'm looking for that. For me, I do a light layer of foundation and when I put it on I honestly do not like the look of my skin like it doesn't smooth my texture which is one you know key criteria for me it is very glowy and as I put it on I'm just like oh I really am not sure about this but when I tell you when I set this foundation with my setting powder the way that it sets and the way that it wears is impeccable impeccable like there's something about when I put no matter what setting powder I use on top of this it instantly like smooths, smooths and blurs my skin. 
that's the result of the powder, right? Not the foundation. So for me with my combination skin, that sets it in. But then as my skin warms up through the day, it just warms up with the most lovely, natural glow from within, not oily or anything like that, just a healthy glow from within. And because it's so lightweight, it just wears like my skin throughout the day. It wears beautifully. It's not like overly long wearing. I think the most I've got out of it is about 10 hours. But even if it is starting to wear away, because it is a more like coverage and natural like skin like foundation, it wears away in a sense that you can't really tell, like it's still really natural. And I just find I look really healthy and just lovely when I wear this. But if you have oily skin, I I just probably would skip it. I mean, take that with a grain of salt. I'm not a makeup artist. This is just like the, my personal opinion. You might have different experiences, different opin opinions to me and that's totally okay. Like makeup's gonna react to all of us very differently. We're gonna have different like preferences and stuff like that, right? It's all science and you know, if we were all the same, how boring. So just take it with a grain of salt. It is my opinion. Next up, a foundation. I really, I really can't get around this foundation. I've tried. It's not the worst foundation in the world that I have ever tried, let me assure you. But it's just, I, I'm too old for this foundation now. And I say that loosely. I'm 33, almost 34 for reference. So I'm not old, but in the sense of like skin and what my skin takes now, I'm too old for this foundation. I probably wasn't the target audience. This is the REM foundation. So Ariana Grande's beauty line. And I don't know, anytime a new foundation comes out, to be honest with you, I just, I mean, I have a thing for all makeup. The limit doesn't exist around here, but foundations and concealers and stuff, I don't know what it is. I just really get sucked into them. I always have ever since I was a kid or like a teenager and getting into makeup. So I was just interested. The price point of this was pretty low. I can't remember off the top of my head, but it wasn't like exorbitant um, in terms of like Australian makeup prices. I will caveat that. I had seen like say Angie Nyquist at the time she had liked it, but I've now seen that she doesn't like it. But anyway, I tried this. This is just, this is more of a medium to full coverage foundation but it's just very thick and heavy on the skin. So, and I don't find I can even like sheer it out to make it look, I don't know, softer and lovely. I just find it's like the formula is like real quite dense and thick. And so because of that, I just find that this really like settles in fine lines. It settles in my pores and stuff. It's not like, it's not the most horrific foundation in the world. It really isn't. I've tried worse, but it's just like compared to the others that I've tried, this is like absolutely bottom tier like I don't want to reach for this I can see myself decluttering it and I think this will be best suited towards someone who has maybe like the skin type that can take a bit of a heavier thicker creamier foundation wants a bit more coverage by the way I got shade light 1n in this foundation and it was a perfect match I will do an insert like a slide at the end of the foundation section where I've like swatched all of the foundation shades for you guys just so that you can see them and then as I mentioned the videos where I've been I've used these foundations in um they'll be linked down below so if you want to see the application you can a foundation that has been on my wish list for a very very long time very expensive and I just I don't know I just it took a while for me to bite the bullet and then I just had this moment of weakness and was like that's it I'm getting it. And this is the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Stick. I got the shade 1.5 Cream, and it's actually a pretty decent shade match for me. It might be a touch too dark for me, but I can very much make it work. I do find the Tom Ford shade range, shade range sorry, in their foundations quite difficult. Like they're either too light, too dark, not quite the right undertone. This is probably the best I'm gonna get. Um, this is lovely, absolutely lovely and I'm thank god by the way because it is it was like $110 but it is so natural and skin like I truly was not expecting it again I think if you have oily skin it might not work for you because it is a cream foundation so I mean if you have a light coverage layer of it I think it'll be fine and you set it with powder that's like it works just fine for me it wears lovely for me but I think if you want to build this up to be a more medium coverage foundation it might get a little bit cakey and oily throughout the day for you um but I just I really do think this is lovely, especially for more mature skin or, you know, 30 and over. I just find this is like skin-like, just truly skin-like. I do find it to be quite, not fully smoothing, but a little bit smoothing. But it's the way that this wears, it wears so naturally and like it doesn't settle in fine lines. It doesn't settle in pores. Like as it wears, it like perfects your skin in a way. It's lovely and it feels very light on the face. It doesn't feel like you're wearing foundation. I found it to be really long wearing. I really was taken aback at how beautiful of an everyday foundation stick this was because 
you know, foundation sticks can be a bit like the cream kind of foundations. They can be a bit heavy if you're not careful, but you know, people weren't lying. Like I picked this up because people really, they constantly put this in their top foundation list and I can see why it is very natural, easy to use. Cause you can just honestly go boom, boom, boom with a little bit of coverage and blend it out even with your fingers. And it's, it just wears so lovely. Like it really perfects your skin as you wear it from what I've found. Another cream foundation that I have tried. Now this isn't new to the market, but it is very new to Australia. It only got released in the last couple of weeks. And that is the Patrick Tar Cream Foundation and Powder. I got the shade Fair 2 and it is a perfect shade match for me. I really like this. Really like this. Thank goodness too, because I was a bit nervous because it seems to be you either like it or hate it. Um, this one, this cream is like, can you see that? It is so much softer and more emollient than I ever expected, but it is lovely. Wow, is it a delight. Again, very similar to the Tom Ford cream, um, like traceless stick foundation in the sense that it's like, it is that cream formula. So you probably want to go a lighter coverage and then just build up it like in, as a spot concealer almost in the areas. This has more coverage than the Tom Ford one though. It definitely does. And you can build this up. Like if your skin can really take that full coverage foundation, then you can build this up and it's it's quite lovely. This again, very, um, I wouldn't say smoothing, but it isn't in texture enhancing or anything like that. Um, but it's just very skin-like and it wears beautifully. Like as you wear it throughout the day, your skin just looks nice. It doesn't look, you know, sometimes your skin with certain foundations as it wears can either look really just caked up and oily or it's settling in fine lines in a, in a horrible way, not a naturalish way, or, you know, um, it can get like almost dry or patchy or something. It just wears like, it just melts into your skin and just wears really ethereally, if you will, throughout the day. I probably would stay away from this to be fair. If you have oily skin, I don't know how long that would last on you if you have oily skin, but let us know in the comments down below. Um, I think my friend Melina has it, so I, um, has oily skin. So I'm not sure if she's tried this, but she'll let us know in the comments. Um, so I, I really do like this again as a lighter coverage and then I just build it up in the areas. Um, I do try and stay away. So I have smile lines right here that can crease in certain like emollient foundations. So I do try and stay away of just putting like really any or just like the lightest amount of product specifically in this area right here. And then I just set it with powder and I found like the first time I wore it, I didn't do that and it did settle in my fine lines here, like in my, my smile lines. But the next time when I just was conscious to like extra, put extra setting powder here and like not as much product, it was completely fine. Um, and they were the only lines that it settled in, it didn't settle in my forehand lines or anything like that. Um, so I really like the foundation, uh, probably not crazy long wearing. I would probably say like eight to 10 hours. And this powder is lovely. I really like it. It is very smoothing and blurring on the skin. I really like it on my under eyes. Um, it adds like just a nice little level of almost like coverage to the under eye. Um, I wouldn't use this all over my face just because I am combination skin. So I, I like to, you know, really set kind of my T-zone and um, here in my forehead because my oils, especially now that we're going into summer in Australia, it really comes through. So I would just go through this that quickly if I did it like that. But again, if, I think if you don't use a lot of powder in your routine, have dry skin, normal skin, you can just put like a light dusting of this and it's it's going to be fine. But for my under eyes, my T's are in like just to like blur and perfect and set my under eyes. I really like it. So I am pleasantly surprised that I am enjoying this. A foundation that in my first impressions, I kind of was like, oh, look, it's not great. It's not bad, but it's not my fave. Um, and I have my reasons why I have done such a 180 on that opinion. It's not even funny. And this has become one of my top favorite foundations in my collection. It really has. And it's the Prada Beauty Foundation. So I have the shade LN10, I think it is, but it doesn't actually say on the bottle here. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's LN10. Great shade match for me. Um, the packaging is really cute. It's a bit fingerprinty, but I really like the packaging and it is... Um, refillable so once I use it up I can just keep this and just purchase the refill which is cool or you could even just like take this glass bit out to like travel if it's like too bulky which is cool um, so in my first review I was like oh it seems it felt like the rare beauty foundation so um, if you ever use the Rare Beauty Foundation or even the Laura Mercier Real Flawless Foundation where it's kind of got this like powdery feel to it so when you apply it it almost does this like fingerprinty thing and that's how this was behaving on the day when I used this in my first impressions. But I think it must have been the skincare or my skin on the day because it's never really done that since. But this foundation, when I tell you it is perfecting, like not, not uh, filter, 
poor for perfecting for example like probably the next foundation I'll talk about but just perfecting it just puts like this soft I don't know like a soft filter on the skin if you will um, it doesn't settle in fine lines it is long wearing it's more of like a natural finish most of these are kind of if I've said they're specifically glowy then they're glowy but otherwise they're kind of just a natural finish nothing really here that I'm going to talk about is like overly matte leaning uh, and it's just again I like to use this as a light coverage and build it up just strategically like here for example where I have some acne scarring or I'll just do a light coverage and then you know use a powdered foundation like the Makeup Forever one to kind of just set it to add the coverage that I want I do find for me the lighter coverage works better but you can build this up a little bit but it just wears impeccably it doesn't break me out and I thought it was going to because it does have a fragrance in it but one of you commented and said this has lactobacillus in it I think it's called and that is actually like a probiotic and that could be counteracting any sensitivities and I, I find that to be true like this really doesn't break me out at all it seems to be very sensitive skin friendly and wears for a really long time 10 12 hours and just the longer you wear it it's almost like the more it perfects your skin the better it wears it leaves this like again natural healthy glow from within i don't know i've really turned a corner with this i really really like it like really like it it's absolutely lovely but i have to say my all-time favorite foundation that i have tried out of all of these like this is wow wow truly is the new Lancome Tint Isole Ultra Wear foundation. This is their newly formulated one. And I have the shade, great question, 135N, perfect shade match for me. It's actually the foundation I'm wearing right now. I love this. This is everything I look for in a foundation. It's like a light to medium coverage foundation, more so medium, I would actually say, but it is so thin that like, even though it's a more higher coverage than the others, because it's such a thin formula, it just like does not look cakey at all on my skin it is smoothing like it puts a filter on my face doesn't settle in fine lines incredibly long wearing wears impeccably like doesn't fade away awkwardly or just cake up or anything um, I find it to keep my oils at bay for the longest time out of all of these foundations I'd still use setting powders but yeah um, but this is wow like top up in my top top foundations like I use this all the time it's the foundation that I'm like okay I need my skin to look good I need my go-to like I just go for this like it's and it's just it's so lightweight like if you've tried the Tinty Doll Ultra Care like the one in the white cap you kind of it's a similar formula but that one's like more this glowy type formula whereas this one is more of a natural almost almost matte almost finish whereas the other one leans more like glowy but it's that same feeling where it's like such a thin formula and you can build it up but you still can't feel it on your skin and then it just wears impeccably and like smooths your pores and everything like if there's one foundation I personally would recommend if you vibe with like my foundation recommendations it is this one personally wow 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 just truly it has knocked my socks off A color corrector slash concealer, depending on, I guess, your under eyes that I tried is the NARS Under Eye Brightener in Night Swan. So this one right here is, it's called the Light Reflecting Eye Brightener and Illuminator. Now you can use this as a concealer or a color corrector. I don't even know if you're going to be able to see that swatch on there because it's a really good shade match for me. Um, the shade range is not super expensive but I think it's supposed to be quite a sheer product so maybe it stretches um, but this I use personally as a color corrector I just find that it has this like it's kind of like the soft matte concealer in a way a little bit more hydrating or a lot more hydrating than the soft matte soft matte concealer from them but in that cream formula where it's like really thin and lightweight on the under eyes so using this as a color corrector for me it's like this first additional layer of concealer in a way that brightens and like color corrects even though it's not a peach or anything my darkness on my under eyes but it's it leaves this really thin layer so it's not going to disturb any of the other formulas that I've got on like my eye so when I go in with my concealer over the top it doesn't disturb the formula so I really like this especially in days when my under eyes are really really dark um I like to put this on because it just gives this like extra oomph and boost to my under eyes before I put my concealer on. But if you are someone that really doesn't want to wear a lot of concealer, you just want like a little touch of brightening and a little touch of, 
uh, coverage, sorry, this will be perfect for you because you just like literally just tap a little bit on and it's really, really long wearing, doesn't crease or anything like that, but it just adds like, it, it will add that little bit of coverage that you're looking for while also just like brightening the under eye up a little bit. It's, it's really a lovely product and I'm surprised I haven't seen more people talk about this. This was another one that also took like seven months to get to Australia. Now for the battle of the concealers and you guys have kind of been asking for a concealer roundup but I didn't want to do one until I really knew my thoughts. Now probably out of the new concealers the only one I think I don't have is the Makeup by Mario one because that one's just like full of straight coconut and so it's just going to give me acne so I can't try that one. Let's start out with the one that I've been testing the longest. I think I've actually done a speed reviews on this concealer before, but I did want to just like include it in here because I do know it is one of the newer ones still. More so as a reference point to the others. So this is the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. I have the shade N2, brilliant shade. It's actually, I've got this concealer mixed with the Tower 28 concealer on my under eyes today. Um, this look, by the way, is look number three in my one week, one palette using the new Danessa Myricks Lightwork 5 palette. I think that video will be up after this one, so keep an eye out. Um, so that is the shade. It's a little bit too deep, but it's like this perfect na um, neutral undertone. I do find with most concealers, I need like a deeper one and a lighter one just for my under eye colors and discoloration. I've got hyperpigmentation, all of the things. So um, I always mix my concealers, I'm always mixing shades, that kind of a thing, so probably just take that with a grain of salt. Um, but this is a really nice shade, I really like how neutral, just straight neutral it is. And I don't like this concealer on its own, you've probably heard me talk about that before. On its own, it just doesn't, it creases on me, it cakes up a little bit, but mixed with other concealers, it just transforms them and it, it transforms itself and it really becomes this incredible product. And I know a lot of people love this on its own and I know a lot of people love this as like a foundation as itself, which it's just, yeah, something about this on its own for me, maybe it's the shade just on its own. Maybe I should get a lighter shade as well and test it that way. But I just, I found it to just be a little bit heavy on the under eyes on its own. But when I mix it with like my Urban, Day, Urban Decay Quickie or like any of my other concealers, it's like, like, I love it. Like, this is honestly almost empty because I use it so often. Um, so I do like this one as a mixing one, just as a bit of an update. Now, this one is the Tower 28. I got the shade BU. Uh, if you're in Australia or UK or Europe or whatever, you can get this off Revolve. I'll have it again linked down below. And then obviously in America, you're lucky enough to get it from either the Tower 28 website or Sephora. So this one is the shade BU. Probably a touch too light but I do actually quite like it. I think it's the right shade for me and I'll tell you why. So this concealer on its own for like say this look right here doesn't provide enough coverage for me. So that's why I like to mix it with another concealer that will boost the coverage a little bit. It's more of a like, medium on the light end spectrum. So if medium, if the medium scale was like this and then this side was light and this side was uh, like more full coverage, it's like down here, right? So it's not a light, light coverage, but it isn't a full solid medium coverage in my mind. But the hydration and smoothing and just the finish on the under eyes of this concealer is like delightful. It makes my under eyes just look like so healthy and smooth and plump and I love it. And it's so lightweight. Like I feel like you can barely feel like you're wearing any concealer on the under eyes at all. It wears so lovely. It doesn't cake up. It doesn't crease or anything like that. It just is such an impeccable formula. For me, I would just like 80%, no, 50% more coverage. Like that would be my ideal formula. The other thing that I really love about this Tower 28 concealer is when I want to do a no makeup makeup, which is very rare for me because I'm like, I I'm fine wearing no makeup. But sometimes when you just want to be like a little bit more put together, but you don't really want to go the whole shebang, I really like this as that. So I'll do like a couple of dots, you know, just under my eyes and through my T-zone to brighten a little bit. And it's just because it's not like a full coverage or like a solid medium coverage, it provides this really nice layer of like undetectable coverage and like evening and brightening and just smoothing a little bit on the skin without it. You know, sometimes if you use a more heavier concealer for like a no makeup makeup look, the formula can, it, you can see it on the skin, whereas this is like really natural. So if you're someone that, again, wants a lighter coverage or like a light, like a medium, but on the lighter end of the spectrum. If you kind of know how I like my concealers, you, you will know the vibe that I'm putting down there, but you want something that's like perfect for mature eyes, smoothing, non-texturizing, hydrating, doesn't crease, but also perfect for those like no makeup makeup days, then 
that's the one that you want. It's, it's really good. Another concealer that I was very, very excited to try because I really love this foundation, like it's matching foundations formula, is the YSL All Hours Precise Angles Concealer. So I got the shade LM1 and I would recommend solidly uh, shading down if you are using me as a reference because this is definitely too deep for me. Uh, and this concealer is okay. If you have ever used the Lancome Tint Isole Concealer in the like with the black lid, this formula pretty much reminds me exactly of that. And that's where it kind of disappointed me because that concealer on its own is quite lovely. But this one, so the All Hours Foundation is like a full coverage foundation, right? Like it is, that's one of the best things about it. If you want that full coverage, that's what it's going to give you. And it's still going to be like light and smoothing on the skin. So I was kind of expecting this to be more of a full coverage concealer, but I personally have not found this to be full coverage. I find this to be a light, like a medium at best coverage concealer. The under eyes, it's it's very lightweight. It's a gel-like formula. It's quite smoothing, but it's just nothing wowing to me. Like nothing about this concealer makes me want to reach for it or use it. Like I have to kind of force myself to remember to use it. And also I really don't like the applicator personally. I find the applicator doesn't distribute a lot of products. So I've got to constantly be dipping in just to get the amount of product that I want. It is a nice mixing concealer. Like I can get my use out of it by mixing it. But overall, this is probably the concealer that I'm like least impressed with. But it was because I was expecting it to be a more fuller coverage like partner to its all hours foundation. And it just wasn't. Next up, we have a very expensive concealer, but I just couldn't help myself. The Gucci concealer. So I got the shade 14 and Fair. And in terms of like the shade itself, like the light to dark ratio, like the shade is fine. It's just the undertone. It is not neutral. It is straight yellow, straight yellow, which is so annoying because I, I'm not a yellow undertone. So it's really obvious. I absolutely have to mix this with another concealer because otherwise my under eyes just look straight yellow. So I would recommend maybe getting like a cool undertone if you're a neutral undertone. Because, yeah, straight yellow. But the actual tone of it would be great if it was just neutral, you know. Um, this, again, lightweight concealer. More of a matte finish. Like, not heavy matte, but definitely more matte than uh, the other concealers I've mentioned before. More coverage. Like, this does have a little bit more coverage than the first three concealers I've spoken about as well. Very lightweight. I wouldn't say this is, like, the most groundbreaking, revolutionary concealer I've ever tried where I'm blown away, like the Huda Beauty Faux Filter or the Quickie Concealer from Urban Decay, for example. But I'm not mad at it. The only thing I'm mad at about this one and the only reason why it probably just doesn't get the extra use that it should get in my collection for its formula is because of the freaking undertone. And it's so expensive that like, I, I do kind of want to pick up one that's in a better undertone for me, but it's so expensive. It makes me angry that I have to do that because this should not be so yellow, you know, and I just can't get past it. But the formula is very, very thin on the under eyes. Um, I wouldn't say it's like overly, it's definitely not overly hydrating. It's not dry and it's not going to make your under eyes drier. I do have a dry under eyes, by the way. It's just straight down the line, kind of like a natural finish. It doesn't settle in like fine lines or crease or anything. It wears quite lovely and it does have that little boost of coverage. It's not full coverage, but it has that little boost of coverage to it. Is it worth the money? Personally, no. I would still recommend the Huda Beauty Faux Filter or the Urban Decay Quickie Concealer over it. And they're a lot cheaper. Another concealer I really, really don't like, and this is actually the worst concealer I have tried out of all of them. I just cannot make this work for me. And I knew better. It's my own fault. But this is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Concealer. So this one right here. And I got the shade 1.3N. It's a fine shade batch for me. At least it's a neutral undertone. Um, you know, no complaints about the shade. It's completely fine. But the formula is so frustrating. And listen, it's my own fault. I... Well, it's not actually because I really, everyone loves the HD, the new HD Makeup Forever foundation. Like everyone seems to love that formula. I picked it up. I just could not make it work for me. It really made me look haggard and old. It really did no matter what I tried. But the HD Makeup Forever Matte Powder, foundation powder, for example, one of my top favorite products in my collection. I use it nearly every single day in some capacity. In fact, I have two shades now. I have a lighter shade for my T-zone and a deeper shade for my, like the rest of my face. Like I really love that. So it was probably gonna swing 50-50 of whether or not I liked this. And I know Blair from Simply Blair really didn't like this. So there was a really high chance I wasn't going to because usually we have the same type of preferences. And the thing that's most frustrating about this freaking concealer for me is when I first apply this, it looks 
lovely in terms of formula. It's smoothing. It is hydrating. It plumps my under eyes up. It looks gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And then within about 30 minutes, it turns into this crepey, creasy mess. And the any form of coverage that it has, which is about a solid medium coverage, just goes away. Like my, my darkness is coming through and it just is like, did I even put concealer on? And if I did, what? Like, it's just awful. And I have tried it mixed with my Urban Decay Quickie, my Huda Beauty, which usually solves everything, my Natasha Denona. I've tried it with all my different color correctors, no color, I've tried it, different powders, everything. I've tried to make this little bad boy work for me and it will not. It just always ends up making my under eyes look horrific. So this is a firm no from me, but I know that there are a lot of people out there that really, really like that. So if you're someone that really likes the HD Makeup Forever foundation, you might really like that concealer. But if you're someone that absolutely hates that foundation, maybe stay away from it. And then last but not least, the highly anticipated House, House Labs Concealer launch. This is the Triclone one. I got the shade Light Neutral. Um, I just picked it up from her website if you are Australian or around the world and um, they don't have it in your Sephora. This is probably a little too deep for me. I would need to eventually pick up another shade that is a little bit lighter so I could mix them together, but at least the undertone's neutral, so I can I can really make it work. I actually quite like this concealer. I wouldn't say it's blown me away. Like, And again, it's more like a medium coverage. And look, I fully recognize that my version of full coverage is probably different to others. Maybe I'm expecting a little too much. So when I talk about full coverage, for me, I'm talking about the Huda Beauty Faux Filter and the Urban Decay Quickie and like, say, a Tarte Shape Tape level of coverage. Not so much formula wise, but just coverage wise. So this is to me about a medium. I think it's nice. Like I really do. I think again, if you have like dry skin, you'll probably really like it. If you really like her foundation, you'll really like this. I'm not, not like, I don't not like it. I just am not wowed by it. But I think one of the reasons for that is also that this shade is too deep for me. And so if I wear it on my own, it's, it's just too deep. And then when I mix it with another concealer, it's hard to tell whether or not it's like, the mix or the concealer itself that I like. So I will eventually pick up a lighter concealer of this. I think if you're someone that's looking for like a medium coverage, it's very hydrating. It's a little bit thicker than your Tower 28. So it's like her foundation, right? Like her foundation is lightweight, but it's also got some like behind it in terms of thickness a little bit. It's, it's very similar to that. Whereas this is very much like a, am I even wearing concealer? It's so lightweight on my under eyes. So it does have a little bit more creaminess to it. Um, a little bit more coverage than the Tower 28, um, but it's, you know, it's still lovely. Like, it's still hydrating. I wouldn't say it's overly smoothing, but not not smoothing on the under eyes. It wears really well. Um, I haven't found it to, like, I don't wear it and go, oh, I never want to wear this again, but I just don't wear it and also go, oh, I love this so much. Whereas, like, even though it doesn't have the coverage I'm looking for, like, the Tower 28, for example, has the same thing. It doesn't have the coverage I'm looking for, but, like, I want to keep wearing it because it just makes my under eyes look so good and it wears so well. That is my long-winded rant on concealers. Now, I just have four powders left. We're in the home straight. And let's do it. First one, let's talk about the Luna Beauty Lunaversal Setting Powder and Translucent Light. If you have oily skin, like oily, I'm talking oily skin, go ahead and get yourself this powder. It's probably the most mattifying powder I have ever used ever. Like it's actually too drying for me. So in the middle of summer when my skin's really, really oily and it's really humid here, it's going to come in handy for that. But I, that's about it for me. Like if it's actually too far drying for me and I have combination skin and, and like a good setting powder, you know? So if you are someone that is really, really oily, I think you'll really like this. It's very finely milled. It reminds me of the Oma Beauty Trip and Smooth powder in that sense, where it's very, very finely milled. Um, so it doesn't feel heavy or cakey on the skin or anything, but it is really mattifying. So keep that in mind. A loose setting powder that I love and adore. Love and adore. And I'm so happy to have it back, or not have it back, but I'm so glad that they've brought something like this back. This is the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse setting powder. You guys have probably been seeing me use this in a lot of videos. I love this. I actually used to love their blur and set powder that they had back in the day. Like I went through like two or three tubs of that. And then when they took it away, I was devastated. It was honestly one of my holy, holy grail powders. So as soon as I saw that they were bringing this one out, I was like, I'm absolutely getting that. And I really hope it's as good as the blur. I actually think it's better than the blur and set 
set back in the day. Um, again, very, 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 very finely milled. So finely milled. Like, it's actually the setting powder I'm wearing today all over my face as well. So, um, you can use this with a powder puff and, like, really push it in to set and forget. Or you can just do a really light dusting with a brush. And it's just, it's so finely milled that you really don't feel it on your skin whatsoever. It is mattifying, but not to the point of, like, I would call it a soft matte. Like, it doesn't mattify where you're just like... <clears throat> and your skin is just blank kind of, you know what I mean? It still gives you kind of a subtle healthiness glow to the skin, but not in a bad way. And it really does keep your oils at bay and all that kind of stuff. Like I can set and forget with this powder. Um, it's very blurring. It, ve it very much blurs through my T-zone, my pores and everything. Like it wears really well, very long wearing. I really, really, really like this one. The Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Pressed Powder in the shade Yellow. I got this because my friend Aura Jackson, she was like, I think you'll like this. And I actually do. The formula wise, I really, really like it. I think the formula of this is gorgeous especially I use this for my under eyes in particular or just like as a finishing type powder the only issue is is this is just too yellow like too deep of a yellow for me on its own for my under eyes so the way that I found to make it work is I mix it with my make powder like my make beauty translucent powder or like my Kosas airy powder which is like a lighter one and I mix them together and it just offsets so much of that like a little bit of that darkness and it looks really lovely it's actually I've got this mixed with the Kosas one on my under eyes right now I mean, you shouldn't have to buy a powder to mix it, but, you know, I bought it, I want to use it, so that's how I've made it work for me in terms of the shade, but the actual formula of this is lovely. So if you are of a deeper skin tone than me and you like these yellow setting powders, you will like this. It is beautiful. They also have, like, a neutral one for, like, darker skin tones as well. That looks really lovely, um, and it's very, very lightweight. It has a soft natural finish so it's not matte it's not drying or anything like that but it's not glowy either like it doesn't have any sheen or anything in it it's just like a straight very finely milled cloud like powder I really really like this I hope that they actually come out with a, an additional shade for paler skin tones because I do think they've probably covered off on the medium to dark range but I think they're probably just missing an option for the paler skin tones but I could be wrong about that I'm not a makeup artist in terms of shades but formula wise love it part of that I really don't like though really don't like is the easy bake and snatch press powder from Huda Beauty I got the shade cherry blossom and I was so, so excited. I actually think this might be the only powder. Is it going to focus? Come on. I actually think this might be the only powder I haven't shown on my channel yet because the one video that I did use it in, the footage got corrupted. <laughs> Just doesn't want me to show it. Um, honestly, I don't... I don't even know. There will be people out there that like this. Do not get me wrong. There will be for sure, but no, it's a no from me. It has like a bit of a radiance to it. So uh, how do I describe what What kind of powder would I describe this like? Do you remember her glowish powder, like her glowish setting powder? It's a little bit like that, but not as radiant. Like that for me was like an absolute tin can of a powder. So it's not um, as metallic as that, but it does have that radiance to it. So if you don't want that, don't even bother. But also at the same time of having the radiance, it's so drying. It is so drying. And I don't find it to even be like smoothing or anything on the skin. I just find it to be really drying to the point where like my skin's just like rejecting it. It doesn't set my under eyes. Like I'll, it'll set it initially, but then it instantly looks dry. And then after like an hour, my under eyes just get like all their darkness peeking through and everything. Like it's like it just, it's like where did it go? And I've tried it with, like multiple different concealers, different ways of setting it, like with a powder puff, with a brush, you know, more powder, less powder, all that kind of a thing. And it just doesn't look good for me. Like it really, I just do not recommend this. And I picked it up because I was hoping it was just a pressed version of her loose powder without fragrance because the fragrance in her loose powder gives me acne. And I really love that powder. It's, a, it's amazing. So I was hoping that this was just the pressed version of that formula, but it is not. And I do not like it. So yeah. Again, just all my opinion. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm sure there's people out there that do love it. That is all my speed reviews for my complexion products that I have tried recently. Now you can see why I've broken this up, right? Because I've, I've really been trying some products. So hopefully that was helpful or interesting or just fun to you in some way, shape or form. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Have you tried any of these? Are you looking to try any of these? If you have any questions, feel free to pop them down. Just a heads up, I am swamped at the moment time wise, like with full-time work and you know the holidays coming up and YouTube and everything I am really swamped and so I'm really behind on like Instagram messages and comments please don't get like just 
is just way the word I don't know I, I will get to them I promise I'm just taking a little while and I really apologize sincerely and like even my uploading has been all over the place I'm just trying to you know get in what I can when I can so please bear with me I appreciate you guys truly from the bottom of my heart I see your comments I will respond I swear and your messages it's just taking me a really long time at the moment so hang in there with me pretty please um but yeah but thank you so much and if you're watching to this point you know you're an absolute legend gosh you're a legend I appreciate you so 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 much and I hope you have the most amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you next time bye